In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made moan. Earth stood hard as iron. Water like a stone. Snow had fallen. Snow on snow. Snow on snow. In the bleak midwinter. Long, long ago. Think back to your days of childhood. Was there ever enough snow? Nothing bleak about a beautiful, bountiful snow. The rush to breakfast, the dress for school, that last minute homework, all activities suddenly suspended. All sound sublimated to silence. Traffic stopped, there's no driving hardly at all. No horns blowing, no cop whistles. Maybe there was the sound of the foghorn in the town announcing school was closed. And after that, all is still. All is hushed. Why, oatmeal never tasted so good as on a snowy day. There is an inner child in all of us in whom our hopes and dreams are ever present. Even now, as grown-ups, we ask, all right, we might grouse, we might bemoan the shoveling, the icy obstacles to our best laid plans, yet even we, grown men and women, waking up to a frosty morning, perhaps we do pause. One more cup of coffee, a deep breath, a long sigh, maybe even a nostalgic note back to our youth before embarking on the day. I still dream of bountiful snowfalls. For me, this week's eight inches were truly a major disappointment. Don't you too long for a change from busy, busy, busy? You know, even when we have an expected day off, we plan too much. We schedule too much. We need more snow to surprise us, drift us into empty space, nothingness, empty vessels we could be, awaiting the fulfillment of God. Timelessness, dear friends, is true spirituality, a consciousness of imminence, of the a presence, a power that sustains the beating of our hearts, the pulsating of our lungs. Advent, now beginning its fourth week, has been calling us from its beginning to slow down, slow down, inviting us to ponder life itself, to question the way we choose to live our lives. In some ways, this pandemic has been and continues to be a kind of advent, a slowing down, an ever-expanding snow day, blanketed in sickness and death for millions, with millions more still grieving, but not without hope not without cultivating in many of us not only a desire for self-care, but a magnanimous sense of caring for our neighbors, that our care for ourselves is aligned with care for one another. 2020 has heightened our sensibilities to our mortality, 
just as the cross of Jesus Christ has been doing for 2,000 years. This year, Jesus has nature herself compelling us to attend to the vulnerable within us so that we can attend to the vulnerable in our cities and towns. All of this invites us to a deeper solidarity with Jesus. We, the remnant, the survivors of this year, should be filled with gratitude and hopefully, now more than ever, appreciating interruptions, enjoying inconvenience, and even postponement as a means to be present to the spirit of the living God here and now and in one another. God with us in life and in death and through death into something new. And when you think about it, isn't prayer a kind of postponement? Really? Why? Prayer, it interrupts our schedules. It interrupts our activities, however essential, however important we deem them to be. Why, to many Catholics, even Mass is an inconvenience. But dare I say, at the very heart of this sacrament, Mass is a respite, a pregnant pause, or dare I say, a snowy day. For just like Mary on that day of the Annunciation by the angel Gabriel, Mass, prayer, Good news is a glorious interruption. Mass can be our snowy day, and the gospel reveals today that Mary was remarkably prepared for it. Have you ever thought of this? What were Mary's goals for her day on that day? What were Mary's hopes and dreams before Gabriel appeared? I'm sure she was just set out to do what was expected of her, kindle the household fire, go fetch water from the well, knead some dough, sweep the floor and look for that lost coin. And what of her life's ambitions? What of her objectives? Before her engagement to jo Joseph, what do you think she envisioned? Perhaps, perhaps it was marriage to a rabbi, someone of status and position. What kind of home did she envision for herself and this eloquent husband? What did Mary want? Did she want a large family? So many children bustling about the house. Laughter tenderness. You know, we tend to not acknowledge this basic, entirely human dynamic of Mary, because we too are too quick to rush to the end of the story, or in this sense, rush too quickly to Christmas. We've got to take time to be aware of what happens moment to moment, day by day. I think Mary, on this day, was invited to postpone her plans. Just as we have to be open to life itself, which continually assaults us with interruptions and inconveniences. Yes, the best laid plans of mice and men. Mary was humble enough. She was open enough to be fluid, to be flexible, to bend, because evidently she had already spent a good deal of time to devotion and to prayer, to pregnant pauses before her pregnancy. A pause 
to really ponder scripture, to think about all those sacred prophecies through the ages, to engage in holy days and rituals. And what is that about if not to be ever mindful of God? Her ascent to Gabriel's announcement could only have come, could only have come if she had already cultivated a prayerful pace for her living, taking time to affirm for herself that she could believe, that she would believe in a promised Messiah before knowing that she would be the vessel, the chosen vessel of the Incarnation. In these final days of Advent, I invite us to carefully, mindfully, cultivate a snowy day sensibility, a Marian spirituality, to live mindfully, moment to moment in hope, cultivating prayerful wisdom. Above all, that means we have to, we must, Reclaim and acclaim Jesus as the way of life for us. Make Jesus the model of our daily living. 2020 has made us ever more attentive to all the realities of this human condition of ours. Mary's ascent that we need Messiah needs to be our ascent too. Pause, ponder, be still. Take time to know who you are. Continue to hold in your heart everything we're celebrating this moment, this time. Know that this day and Christmas Day and every day we are called on to eternity. Let it snow. Let it snow. Let it snow.